In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the new eMMC Hack Gen tool and the NX9 Manager to modify the console's firmware, also known as the Level 1 Unbreak Guide. Let's dive in. We need to download some files to follow the guide. Start by downloading the Windows version of eMMC HackGen GUI. Download the customized and extend manager that can detect the latest console firmware. Download any firmware file from the list. And download the latest head spec. This guide enables you to upgrade, downgrade, or even repair consoles with minor issues, previously referred to as the Level 1 Unbreak Guide. But now I will use the Hecate USB tools and the NX NAND manager to inject the generated files into the NAND without using the System Restore V3 script. This guide is risky, so please pick up your console's NAND before following the guide. When dealing with modded consoles, you may encounter various consequences in the form of errors. Not all errors come with a guaranteed solution, but when you encounter these messages, they can often be resolved by following the Level 1 Unbreak Guide. This guide will also enable you to downgrade or upgrade the console's firmware without using Daybreak. Please seek advice from an expert before deciding to follow the guide. This guide comes with no warranty whatsoever. If you choose to follow it, you are responsible for the results. Let's assume you already have a modded console and you can access Hecate. I'm using the latest head spec for this guide. Please follow my Telegram channel to get it. The first step is to identify your console type. To accomplish this, click on Console Info and select HW and Fuses. HW stands for Hardware. To learn more about the console fuses, please watch my previous video about the launch menu or read about it from the link in the description below. On the HW and Fuses info page, you need to read the SKU. For example, this is Arista or a V1. As this is an unpatched version, you will notice a green text indicating whether the unit is vulnerable to exploitation via the RCM bug. In other words, we can mod this console without using a mod chip. And this is the patch Arista or V1. This unit doesn't support soft modding. From this version onward, a mod chip is required to modify the console. This is the V2. This console is similar to the V1 but it comes in a red box and has a longer battery life. Starting from this variant, the codename will be Mariko. This is the light console, and its codename is still Mariko. Finally, this is the OLED, which still uses the same codename, Mariko. Next, let's back up the system. This step is essential to ensure safety and prevent any potential damage. To back up the console's name, please press these buttons. If you want to back up the MUMMC, enable the SD MUMMC raw partition and press these buttons. And now we need to get the console keys. Click on Payloads and select the Lockpick RCM payload. Select Dump from SysNAN. Press any button to get back to the main menu, then select Reboot to Hecate. The next step is to access the content of the micro SD card using a USB cable. Click on Tools, then USB Tools, disable the Read Only option, and finally click on SD card. Get the USB Type-C cable and connect the console to a Windows PC. Open the mounted drive, open the Switch folder, and copy or move the prod.kiss file to your computer. Select the downloaded archives and extract each of them into separate folders. I used WinRAR to get it done. Open the eMMC HackGen folder and run the app. Select the prod case. Then select the extracted firmware folder. The next step is crucial. If your console is a V2, Light or OLED, you should enable the Generate Mariko Firmware option. If you have a patch V1, do not enable the Auto RCM option. 
Please refer to the HW and Fuses page under Hecate for more information. After setting up, click Generate and select where to save the files. I put it on the desktop. Please ignore the error pop-up window. Close the app and open the generated folder. You will see several files and folders inside it. Now, reopen the microSD card content. Open the backup folder. Enter the alphanumeric folder and get into the restore folder. You have two options, whether you want to alter the sysmmc or the mummc. In this video, I'm going to alter the sysmmc. If you want to modify the mummc, you must access the mummc folder and then follow the rest of the instruction in the video using the corresponding folder name. Open the partitions folder. Now select all bcpkg2 files and copy it to the partitions folder. Then, you will need to remove the .bin file extension from the bcpkg2 files. You may need to adjust your window settings to display the file extensions before proceeding with this step. Now leave the partition folder and ensure you are inside the restore folder. Copy the boot0 and the boot1 files into this folder. Again, remove the .bin file extension from those files. Next, safely remove the mounted SD card drive by going into the bottom right of your Windows screen and selecting Eject UMS. Ensure the read-only option is still active. Depending on your previous step, select the eMMC raw GPP to modify the sysmmc or the MU raw GPP to alter the MUMMC. As previously mentioned, I want to modify the sysmmc, so I chose the eMMC raw GPP. Back to your computer. Now open the NX NAND Manager folder and run the app. The first thing we need to do is to fit the app with the console keys. Click Options, select Configure Keyset, then press Import Keys from File. Select the Prod.Keys file, click OK, and save it. And now let's open the NAND. Select File, Open Drive, then select EMMC GPP Hecate. If you are altering the MUMMC, the drive name will be SD GPP Hecate. Now we will mount the system partition. Click it, press mount, and select any drive letter. If you see this pop-up window, it means the Dokkan driver is not installed. Please press the button to install it. After installing the Dokkan driver, you will be able to mount and explore the selected partition. Open the folder that was generated by the EMMC hack chain. Select the mounted system partition drive, then open the contents folder, then enter the registered folder. Select all the files inside it, and delete it. Now, open the registered folder inside the generated directory, and proceed to copy its contents to the registered folder on the mounted drive. If the NX NAND manager unexpectedly closes, Please remount the drive and attempt to copy the content again. Get into the save folder on the mounted drive. Find and locate a file that has the 120 suffix and delete it. Now navigate to the save directory inside the generated folder and copy the 120 file to the mounted drive. Close the window and unmount the drive. Remove the USB cable from the console. Now click the Restore eMMC button. Depending on your previous selection, if you wish to update the MUMMC, you need to click the SD MUMMC raw partition. Otherwise, please proceed with the video guide. Click the eMMC boot 0 and boot 1. Press the power button to proceed, then press the power button again to ignore the message. Now close the page. And click eMMC all.
press the power button to proceed, and please ignore the missing file notification. Now close the page. And again, depending on your previous selection, try to launch that world. I chose the SysMMC CFW. Get into the system settings and check your console's firmware version. If you are unable to boot the console or encounter an error, it may be due to not following the guide correctly or there may be other issues with your console that cannot be resolved by the video guide. But that's how I successfully got rid of the system restore feature script to execute the level 1 unbreak guide. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you found it helpful and learned a new skill. See you in the next video.